I think it's worth showing the breakdown of Warren Buffett's dividend income one more time. So if this is your first time seeing this, then I strongly suggest you pull up a chair and take a seat. And if you saw these figures in my last monthly dividends video, then let this be a nice refresher of the power of dividend growth investing. Right, so here we go. So Warren Buffett makes $118 every second, $6,700 every minute, $403,000 every hour, $9.6 million a day, $294 million a month, and that will give you about $3.6 billion every year. Warren Buffett says it like this, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. And dividends is one of the best ways to make passive income while you're sleeping. What's going on guys? My name's Emmanuel and welcome to my channel. Guys, I absolutely love dividends growth investing and my portfolio now has grown to over $1,400 in annual dividends income. And if you're not familiar with the dividends growth investing strategy, all it pretty much means is you buy shares in a company that's consistently growing its dividends payouts to its shareholders every single year. A perfect example of this is Johnson & Johnson. They have grown their dividend payouts every year for the past 57 years. That's a madness. And to check this guys, all you have to do is go to seekingalpha.com. In the search bar, enter the name of the company or the ticker symbol that you want to invest in. Click on dividends. And on the dividend scorecard, you will see dividends growth in years. However, if you wanted to see the dividends growth chart, click on dividend growth. Scroll down to dividend growth history and click select all. And there you go guys. But for today's video guys, I wanted to bring to your attention a stock that pays its dividends to its shareholders every single month. But the reality is guys, if a company pays you a dividend once a year or twice a year or four times a year or even every month, the amount you receive will be the same, but there's something extra attractive to me about receiving dividend payouts every single month. I don't know what it is guys. It's maybe because I have a property portfolio, so I'm used to seeing rental payments coming in every single month rather than once a year. We'll take a closer look at their fundamentals and also we'll take a look at their financials. I'll also want to revisit a popular stock that I mentioned from my last monthly dividend stock video and take another look at its fundamentals. It's been heavily affected by the Roni Rona and I feel like I need to bring it to your attention. So with all that said guys, don't forget to smash the like button as it helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you're new, I wanna say welcome and I hope you gain some value from today's content. And if you do, hit the subscribe button as it will be really cool having you on board. And with all that said guys, let's dive into today's video. All right guys, so the first company we're going to be looking at today is Stag Industrial Inc. And the ticker symbol is STAG. And taking a quick look at their dividend scorecard, as you can see guys, they've been growing their dividends for the past eight years um, at a growth rate of 2.08%. That's a five year growth rate. You see the dividend yield is sitting at a nice 4.83%. It's actually within the range of good to high, okay? So that's not too bad at, at 4.83. Um, their payout ratio is quite high and that's because they are a REIT. And as you can see here, guys, their dividend frequency is monthly. So they pay their shareholders every single month, okay? So before we dive into the financials, let's take a deeper look at the fundamentals for this company. Okay guys, so as I've already mentioned, we're looking at Stag Industrial today. So what's the story for Stag? Okay, so they are a REIT, which pretty much means 90% of the taxable income that they make is paid out to uh, shareholders as dividends, okay? So the company owns about 456 industrial properties, which are located in 38 states. So at the moment, they're operating only in America. They haven't branched out to the UK, um, which is a little bit of a red flag, but because they, they have duplicated themselves in multiple cities, it kind of brings it back home. So I wouldn't say they're that much of a high risk because they have shown that they can grow and they can expand their operations, all right? So majority of their properties range from warehouses, distribution centers, light manufacturing facilities, 
um, and, and so on, all right? And they're single let tenants. So they have one tenant that takes control of the whole of the building. And typically these leases last for a minimum of 10 years uh, and they extend it as the years go on. So that's what a single let tenant means. And before you start thinking to yourself, oh, this is a bit boring, not interested, give it a chance, guys, give it a chance because boring is actually good. Yes, it's not your Tesla, which is off to the moon. It's not your Amazon, but you will find out Amazon actually plays a key role in this company. Um, so give it a chance, guys. Boring is good, boring is predictable, okay? So how do they generate their revenue? Of course, they generate their revenue from the rental payments from their single let tenants, okay? And they also generate revenue from sales of appreciated warehouses. So when I was looking into their financials, some of their warehouses that has a lot of capital appreciation, they've ended up selling at a profit. So that's also how they go about generating revenue. Right, so what are their recent expansion projects, guys? So they used to primarily focus on purchasing warehouses in secondary markets so that's your North Carolina Wisconsin and for my UK audience think of it like this so these are like your secondary markets not your primary markets like your London's your Manchester or your Birmingham's okay but recently they've started to actually target primary locations you know so Chicago and Philadelphia so imagine it as if they're they're now buying warehouses in Manchester or in Birmingham, one of those key locations, okay? And what has that done? So that has now attracted better quality tenants. And this is what I mean by uh, Amazon earlier. One of their main tenants is Amazon. With Amazon's expansion in their e-commerce takeover bid, of course they need more, what? Warehouse space. And if they need warehouse space, who are they gonna come to? Stag Industrial. Now you're getting the picture. This is why I told you to stick around because it does get a bit juicy, all right? Also, some of their tenants are Ford and DHL again with storage. So at this point guys, I'm going to go into their quarterly report and show you a list of their top 20 tenants, all right? All right guys, so we are on Stag's most recent first quarter report of 2020. And as you can see here, their portfolio is pretty diverse across multiple industries. So just looking at their geographical diversification, as you can see, uh, they've got quite a lot of properties in Philadelphia, which is obviously a first market. 8.5% uh, of their portfolio is in Philadelphia and Chicago as well, which is actually quite good to be fair. And they're also in Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Houston, Texas, Boston, Columbus, uh, ETC. So now look at their tenant diversification, guys. So their number one tenant is Amazon, baby. Amazon is their number one tenant with free leases with Amazon. So again, these are long-term leases and it equates to 1.9% of their rents. So as you can see here, going down the list, they also have DHL. They've got five leases with DHL. Um, another popular name that I can recognize is Ford Motors Company. They have one lease with Ford. Um, any other ones I can recognize? Yeah, FedEx, again, another popular brand that we are aware of. But you can see their, their portfolio of tenants is really well diversified. So they're not hanging on to just one tenant for dear life. You know, Amazon, yes, is a big name, but only represents 1.9% of their rental revenue. So they're very well diversified. And looking at their industry diversification, which I think is incredible, they are heavily weighed towards the auto components industry. They also have dealings with the air freights, um, commercial services and supplies, machinery, food products, household durables, electrical equipment, food and staples retailing. They've got everything, guys. And one thing that I liked about this diversification is that majority of these products are pandemic proof. So you've got your beverages here, you know, you've got your containers and packaging, you've got your machinery, you've got your food products, food food products, you've got house durables. These are all essential products that Stag Industrial house in their warehouses. And they are essential. People will constantly need their food products, you know, their household durables. And this reflected in the amount of rent they were able to receive during the whole lockdown. So speaking of rental revenue, let me take you to that part now. All right, guys, so here are the first quarter results that were highlighted by the management. And as you can see here, they had an increase of net income of 42 cents pretty much per share. So in the first quarter of 2019, they made 5 cents a share. Crazy, crazy growth. And taking a look as well, guys, they actually, during the first quarter, they actually managed to acquire nothing 
nine more buildings in their first quarter of 2020, which is incredible. So where most companies in the first quarter were pretty much dying due to the lockdown, they were busy acquiring more buildings to add to their portfolio. Also, guys, as well as acquisitions, they managed to sell three buildings in their first quarter of 2020, which gave them a profit of $46 million. Now, straight away, as I was reading this, I'm like, man, management are on point. They are actually doing a really, really good job. They're smashing it and taking advantage of the global lockdown. And looking at this point, guys, they achieved an occupancy rate of 96.2% in the middle of a lockdown. That is really, really impressive. All right, guys, so I would like to draw your attention to this final part here. They collected 99% of their rent in March. And obviously, they posted their first quarter earnings in the middle of April. But at the time of them posting their quarterly results, they'd already collected 90% of their April's rent pretty much. So these guys are solid and they performed really well during the lockdown. Okay guys, so back to the slide now. So what are the opportunities? Okay, so the US industrial market is worth $1 trillion. Okay, and a huge chunk of that industrial market space is now largely connected to the growth of demand in the e-commerce space. So you've got your Amazons, you've got your Shopify, all of these e-commerce giants that are growing and expanding. Their demand for storage space is continuing to grow. And companies like Stag Industrial are properly placed to capitalize on the growth of e-commerce. And I think with the lockdown, the e-commerce space is just going to expand even more. People who generally didn't shop online before the crisis have now had to make the step and shop online. And some of them probably like it or prefer it. So I think this is a great thing for Stag Industrial and this creates a huge opportunity for them. All right, guys. So as we normally do, we like to take a look at the fundamentals. OK, and then and for their fundamentals, I'm using Yahoo Finance. OK, straight away, guys, let's take a look at their operating margin. And as you can probably guess, the operating margins is quite high, sitting at 27% with a profit margin of 24%. That's to be expected from a REITs. Look at their quarterly earnings year on year growth. It's sitting at 784%. So as I showed you from their highlights, they grew it from 5 cents a share to four, was it 42 cents a share between the first two quarters. Crazy. And looking at their balance sheet, guys, they have $324 million in cash and they have total debt of $1.9 I remember, guys, with a REIT, they have to pay out 90% of their taxable income to shareholders. So typically with a REIT, their cash versus their debt position is really quite large. So take this with a pinch of salt. So don't look too hard into their cash versus their total debt. But what you do want to look at is their current ratio, which is sitting at a beautiful 5.59%, which is incredible. They have a book value of 16, so it's trading not too far off its book value per share. All right, guys, so before we move on to the next stock, let's take a look at some of the insider transactions that's been taking place. And as you can see here, guys, all of these directors have just been giving themselves, they've been awarding themselves stocks <laughs> of this company, you know, and they're quite recent as of 15th of April. Wow, look at that. That was a payday for all of these directors, boy. They took care of themselves nicely. <laughs> but that's always a good sign, guys. When you've got the insiders buying their own stock, when you've got companies buying their own stock, it's it's an indication that they think that the stocks are quite undervalued and there's a lot more growth potential in stock. So if insiders are buying, that gives me some confidence that, yo, these guys think it's going to grow. It might be a good idea if I also buy. But remember, guys, do not buy solely on insider transactions. Always look at the financials, look at the unfundamentals. If you understand the company and you do believe in its growth, then you make an investing decision. So this is just a nice little cherry on top, as it were. All right, guys. So in my last monthly video, I did an analysis on realty income. Ticker symbol is O. And this is one of the stocks that I wanted to update you on. But before we go on to the update, as you can see here, they've done really well. I mean, their dividend growth has been 26 years. They've been growing it for 26 years at a 4.38% growth rate for the past five years. And they've got a really decent dividend yield of 4.65%. And as you can see here, guys, their dividend frequency has been monthly. Right, so these are all pluses for Realty. Okay, on Realty Income's website, on press releases, they uh, gave some more information on how they've been performing in their second quarter. 
and I would like to bring this to your attention. On the 2nd of July, guys, they gave us information on how much rent was collected. So for April 30, 2020, they managed to only collect 83% of rent. And as you can see, guys, in May, they only managed to collect 82% of their rent, you know, from their top 20 tenants. It's getting worse, it's getting worse. And for June, it went up a little bit from their top 20 tenants, they only managed to collect 82.5%. And for the quarter of June, again, it stayed at, and it stayed at 82.5%, guys, okay? So let's take a look at their top 20 tenants. All right, guys, so here are Realty Income's top 20 tenants, okay? And as you can see here, the, the first couple of tenants are fine, but when you start getting to LA Fitness, these are the gyms, when you get to AMC Theatres, you get to Cineworld, which is in the UK, so Cineworld still isn't open as we speak. Another one of their top 20 tenants is Lifetime Fitness. You can just imagine like these theatres and these fitness centres, not, they're not going to be able to pay the rent. And how long for? Who knows, you know? Guys, I just wanted to draw this to your attention. I did highlight Realty Income as an incredible company, and they are an incredible company. As you can see, they've been consistent with growing their dividends over 26 years, but they are struggling right now, guys. And as a result of their struggles, guys, they recently also gave another press release. They're trying to raise more capital by doing a public offering. So that means they're offering up more notes to try and secure more capital. So they are really struggling, guys. If you are an investor in Realty Income, these are things you need to consider, okay? And you might want to look at your investment again. And if you're confident in the recovery for realty income, then that's your decision. But I thought, because I did initially cover it in my first monthly dividends video, I thought, let me just update you on it, all right, guys? Before we leave, I just thought I'll give you some more monthly dividend payers. So this is Main Street Capital, um, ticker symbol is M-A-I-N. Of course, guys, do your own due diligence on their financials and the fundamentals make sure you understand the business before you decide to invest but they've been growing their dividends for the past four years uh, at a 2.85 percent growth rate they've got a really high dividend yield of 7.91 percent and of course guys they do pay their dividends monthly another company that i covered in my previous monthly dividends video was ltc uh, long-term care properties they haven't grown their dividends in the past year but over the past five years they have grown it at 2.25 a dividend yield is currently sitting at 5.97% and also their dividend frequency is monthly. And lastly guys is Gladstone's investment, ticker symbol is G-A-I-N. They've been growing their dividends for the past three years and at a five year growth rate it's been sitting at 3.27%. They've got an extremely high dividend yield ooh, of 8.41% and their dividend frequency is monthly. Alright guys and just to make you aware Stag is available on Trading212. You just go to the search, you type in Stag and you've got here Stag Industrials and a share of stag will cost you about 23 quid so not too bad considering they'll pay you every single month for each share that you own so that's stag guys i must stress don't invest in a company solely for its dividend yield or for its dividend payout frequency or its dividend growth or even just because it pays dividends fundamentals do often change for a company which can affect its operations and it's absolutely important that you look at the company's overall durability and also its long-term survivability that comes by paying close attention to their balance sheets and like i always say guys make sure you do your own due diligence and your own analysis before you decide to invest in any company or in any stock a great book that i like to recommend to help with your investing knowledge is peter lynch's one up on wall street the link is in the description below guys grab yourself a copy and if you do want to start investing i would highly recommend my broker trading 212 click the link in the description below and trading 212 will give us both a free share with all that said guys don't forget to smash the like button hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to see more content from myself thank you for watching guys and i'll catch you in the next video peace